If there's one model in finance you need to know, then it's the capital asset pricing model. It's used by every bank every single day and it will teach you how to think like a finance pro. So let's get into it. Quick reminder of where we are in the course right now. So far, I've talked very generally about the theory of economic equilibrium, and I said the price depends on the time horizon of repayment, the risk and return structure of a financial asset. But today I'm going to make one central assumption, and that's going to allow us to make more specific statement about prices. And the one very critical assumption is this. We're going to assume that every investor on the market is a mean volatility investor. In other words, he or she only cares about the return and volatility of his or her overall position. And today I want to talk about what this implies for the portfolios that the investors are holding. Remember what we did on the chapters on Markowitz mean variance analysis. It was these chapters. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to lessons four and five where I talked about this in detail. What we did there is we assumed that an investor only likes the return and volatility of his or her overall position. And we concluded with this central graph that I have here Again, this central graph is we have a portfolio of stocks and we have a riskless bond. And every purple dot, that's the mean volatility of a portfolio of stocks. And here you see the riskless asset. It's at about 6%. And if we assume that people only care about the mean and volatility of their overall position, then their investment decision will be, I will split my money between the very special tangency portfolio, that's this one, it's the portfolio with the highest mean volatility ratio and the riskless asset. And remember, that's what we called Tobin's mutual fund theory. So now we can go a step further and actually think what happens if everybody on a market thinks and acts that way. So let's say we have Anna. And Anna is such a mean volatility investor. So her decision is of the $100 she wants to invest, she will put $20 into the riskless bond and the rest, the $80 into the tangency portfolio. And this tangency portfolio is a very particular combination of all risky assets out there. So, so it could be 20% of the Tesla stock, 20% of the Apple stock and so on. So out of the $80 she puts into the tangency portfolio, she puts 20% of that into the Tesla stock 20% of that into the second stock and so on. So let's consider Mike. He's another mean variance investor and he's also on the market. And he has $1,000 to invest and he puts 500 of that into the riskless bond and 500 into the tangency portfolio. And the tangency portfolio, it's once again, it's the same portfolio. It's 20% of the Tesla stock, 20% of the next stock and so on. And we have a third investor, it's Angela. And Angela is also a mean variance investor. So she puts her $10,000 in part into the riskless bond. Let's say she puts 100 into the riskless asset and the rest, so $9,900 into the tangency portfolio. So once again, same allocation, 20% into the Tesla stock and so on. And you might see where I'm going there. Everybody puts their money into the tangency portfolio, into this very special portfolio. So if we look at the entire market, what will we see? 20% of the entire money invested will be invested into the Tesla stock. 20% will be invested into the second stock and so on and so on and so on. So with that logic of aggregation, the central claim we make is that the market portfolio is actually the tangency portfolio. And do you see the magic implication of that? As an investor, you don't need to do mean variance analysis. You just look at the distribution of assets on the market and you just invest the same. By the simple logic of aggregation, if everybody invests as a mean variance guy, everybody will invest into the tangency portfolio. So the overall assets will also be invested in the proportion of the tangency portfolios. That's the magic logic of the cap M. 
And that is why we love the market portfolio as investors, because we assume that that is the tangency portfolio. So now let me show you the real market portfolio of today. This graph is from a paper that was actually written in part by some of my colleagues from the University of Bonn. I'm gonna link it in the description and it tells you the distribution of assets in 2050. So what do we see? We have about 20% in housing. We have about 25% in equity, so that's stocks. Then we have about, I don't know, maybe 5% in bonds. And then we have another 10% in bank deposits. And the rest, well, that's in kind of more complex financial assets like derivatives, which I don't wanna go into here. So if you truly believe the cap M, then that is the portfolio you should hold. 25% equity, 20% housing, 5% bonds, and 10% deposits. However, there's one big critique with the cap M and this result. It is that it's really hard to replicate that market portfolio, because if you want to invest in real estate, you can't just invest $100 in real estate. Buying a flat or a house is expensive. You need to start maybe with, I don't know, 200,000 to just buy a house. So it's not possible for everyone. And that is the major reason why funds came in. There's a fund, the MSCI World, that includes the largest 1,500 companies in the world. And this fund includes about 85% of global equity. So it includes almost all of this, 85%. And this is why it can be very easy to be an investor. You just invest into the MSCI world and then you've replicated the equity part of the market portfolio already. And to be honest, this theory is the reason that people made the MSCI world. It's the reason that this fund exists because this theory tells you that this is the absolute best way to invest. So wrapping up this video, in this video we derive the first conclusion of the capital asset pricing model. And remember, in the capital asset pricing model, everything critically depends on this assumption that we assume that every single person is a mean volatility investor in the market. There's no irrational people. Everybody understands the math. Everybody understands what they're doing. But if that is the case, it logically follows from mean variance analysis and Tobin's mutual fund theory that everybody invests into the tangency portfolio and the riskless bond. So if we look at the overall distribution of assets in the market, by the logic of aggregation, the market portfolio has to be the tangency portfolio. And this is very tangible investment advice. It tells you if you go into the market, just invest into the same proportion as the market does. Because if all the investors are smart and know what they're doing, then the market portfolio will be a smart portfolio. And, then, and in the next video, I wanna take you a step further. The second statement of the cap M is not about portfolios, but it's about the prices of individual assets. So see you there.